The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Any health advice given, whether general, diet, physical or spiritual, is general only and must be verified by your doctor. If you need medical advice, please consult a doctor. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the latest edition of the Health and Fitness Show. Uh, I'm your host for today, Suleiman Rafiq, and we are broadcasting live from the studios of Inspire FM today on the 19th of September 2019. Reaching listeners uh, in Luton and surrounding areas via the Inspire FM website. If you are listening to this show on any other day apart from the 19th of september then it is a repeat if you prefer to watch as well as listen you can do that via facebook all you have to do is go to uh, our facebook page and click on our live link this is your show so why not get involved you can do that by text or whatsapp on 0777-948-1822 introduce today's guests and topics i am delighted to share uh, an amazing project being coordinated by the british islamic medical association uh, hashtag lifesavers project lifesavers is the flagship project of bema uniting healthcare professionals in service of their local communities through the power of unity on a single day of action every year thousands of members of the public are taught basic life support skills the bema lifesavers teaching program consists of four skills one cpr two recovery position three management of choking and four management of bleeding each of these skills are taught using an explanation at the beginning a practical demonstration and a chance for attendees to practice at the end this follows the accredited british heart foundation heart start program the project started off in 2014, teaching life-saving skills in free mosques in London. And each year following, it has now expanded and uh, I believe it's over 125 mosques in the UK participating this year. And that involves over 750 volunteers as well as 2,700 members of the public. So if you'd like to know more, you can visit www.britishima.org forward slash lifesavers. And I'm delighted to say that our very own uh, Burry Park Jamia Masjid are taking part on this in this event on Saturday, the 28th of September at 2 p.m. So as I say, for more information, you can search British IMA forward slash lifesavers so on to today's topics and i'm delighted to say we have some expert guests in the studio and so you don't have to hear much more from me and uh, the first half of today's topics will be in relation to healthy parenting Uh, and we are joined uh, from colleagues uh, from fly and start could i just ask you to introduce yourselves 
Yes, good evening. My name's Sue Bugden and I'm the Flying Start Parenting Coordinator. And I'm Christine Rogers and I'm the Flying Start Implementation Manager. Fantastic. And so my understanding is that you have an award-winning online training program offering Luton parents, carers and grandparents help with all those challenges and unanswered questions they face when caring for a child. Now, can you just tell us a little bit more before we get onto the program about Obviously, this is a health and fitness show. Yeah. We're talking about parenting. Yes. So what exactly are the links between parenting and health? Okay. Well, if we think of ourselves as, you know, very as social beings and that we, we thrive on relationships and um, negative and positive experiences in relationships have a massive impact on our own emotional health. And then you think of the role of a parent and really they are the first caregivers that develop those relationships with from from well in fact from before the baby is born but from when the baby is born and if they are able to provide a healthy role model then the child uh, baby develops the um, belief in relationships and then can develop themselves as a healthy adult so it really we see it as very key to um, good emotional health in adulthood and uh, my understanding is is um, like they say the kind of zero to five uh, age range um, is like one of the most important in a person's development. Is is that true? Yes, that's right. So if you think of the. Um baby's brain and in those early days it's a very you know it's very smooth and they're making lots of connections and exploring their outside world and if though if that baby brain development is healthy in those early years it means that they have the right sorts of reactions to things that life presents um so unfortunately we know from research that if the, that that those foundations aren't in place then um, the damage can have lifelong effects sure. and is there any like um, particular within that <coughs> zero to five is it, is it any particular or is it across the zero to five in your the case? first three years really yeah. are absolutely fundamental to healthy brain development the brain's a wonderful thing though and it does go through various stages of um development so in the middle childhood it's a, a period of consolidation really and then there's another fantastic opportunity to influence change when um when you hit adolescence because that's another rapid period of change um so some that is also an opportunity to maybe correct some things that have maybe not been in place when the baby was younger sure and so um you know we're very very fortunate in luton to have flying star uh, yes. it feels as though there isn't much you don't do when <laughs> <laughs> picnic in the park I uh, think Chris uh, could answer uh, that actually yes. uh, um, and all these different uh, programs that you offer um, so as we said in the introduction you've launched a new online program and it's called the, the Solihull approach it's based on the Solihull right. approach and it's actually called understanding your child okay um that there's also an antenatal program called understanding your pregnancy mm -hmm. labor birth and baby and one for after baby's been born understanding your baby sure. so there's three programs but it's important to say the understanding your child mm. also covers the teenage years okay and why have you why have you gone for that this this model right well partly that we identified a gap at fly and start we're strictly um there to provide services for families with under fives right. And we kept getting phone calls and inquiries from professionals and parents who were looking for some sort of parenting course, but their children were over five. Yeah. So it was in part to address that mm. gap. Um, plus, we did lots of discussions mm. with partner agencies and with parents who seemed to be preferring the idea of an online course that they can access in the comfort of their own home at any time that suits them and go work at their own pace through the modules it's um got it's a uk grown program for a change because some of our programs are american that's not to say they're they're not good but this this feels more like it's been grown in the uk and there's a big evidence base that shows lots of research now showing that it works that it does work and 
obviously one of the advantages as you say about being online is that you can do it in your own time is there any costs involved for people wanting to participate Ordinarily, it would cost up to £39 if you want to do all three courses, but Luton Council Fly and Start, along with um, Cambridge Community Service, which is the health visiting service, have funded a multi-user licence for one year, okay. which means that all residents of Luton can access it for free. Okay, great. And how would they get that? How would they get it? So it's really very simple. They go to the website, www.inourplace.co.uk. Just make sure I've got that right. (laughs) Um, They then arrive at a screen and they click on the button that says start or pay for, pay for this course or access, or enter an access code. Yep. They click on that green button, go through, and they type in the access code HATTERS, together with their first name, surname, and an email address, sure. and their Luton postcode. And that's it. And then they're into the, the choice of programmes. Great, great, great. I must confess, I'm asking you these questions. I have, I have tried it out myself. Uh, have you? Yeah, I have. Oh. I have. I was very curious. Uh, yes. Uh, and so I have tried it out. And it is very easy. It's a very, it's a very user-friendly platform, isn't it? Some, yes. Sometimes they're a bit clunky. Um, yes. But this is quite... It's quite easy to use, isn't it? Yeah. Well, nationally, we're part of the third rollout, if you right. like. So other areas have already implemented it um, mm-hmm. as an online programme. So we're part of wave three, as they call it. So yeah. they've learnt a lot, I think, through the initial rollouts and they've made up adaptations to the programme already. So okay, interesting. Yes. And what what so for people that m- may not have heard about this um, programme, what exactly is new different about it in terms of as a parenting tool in a way it complements the other parenting that we do offer so it's it's not anything that contradicts the other programs on offer in luton it's a relationship approach so it looks at how um, a parent can um, be more in tune with their child um, strengthen that relationship and support them to manage their emotions so it's a way of helping parents to help children to sort of regulate their emotions and through that build stronger relationships sure. and that's why it's also relevant to grandparents mm. and extended family who want to know more yeah. and chris just bringing you in in terms of um obviously as i said we we have we have a range of different services in Luton. So we were, we, was Luton chosen as phase three? Did we apply for phase three? How did that work? We were approached, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yes. We are, we are often approached in Luton, actually, <laughs> yeah. because, because we are quite diverse in what mm. we do. <clears throat> and we, we respond quite yes, nicely, yeah. I think, to working with our families. And I think because we have Flying Start, which is the partnership framework for our services antenatally to five years, mm. people come to us because they can see that we're already in quite a good place to take new initiatives onwards Mm. Um, so we're really delighted to have this new parenting program to sit with like Sue has already said about all of the other parenting um, programs that we have on offer through the children's centre and through Stepping Stone so we see it as an addition that enables families that possibly might not be able to access the children's centre yeah. for reasons that they're in work or it just yeah. doesn't work or they're in shift they do shifts mm. that actually this enables us to have an offer that can ac- everybody can access and you can work together as a group of people if you wanted to do it mm. you, we, it comes in different languages which Sue will be able to talk yes. about because yeah. that we see as an absolute asset of this mm. that we've got that option as well knowing yeah. how diverse we are mm. um, in Luton but it also enables um, professionals to work with families families to work on their own but also every it's just got so many so many different possibilities and possibilities yes. that we yeah. could see it being a really good good thing to have great what other languages does it have? so um at the moment it's available english and then in written it's urdu bulgarian chinese arabic polish and Welsh, which um, probably isn't too relevant to the population of Luton. Um, and then you can have audio options in English and Urdu as well. Okay, so the audio, I didn't realise that. The audio. Yes. Okay. So when you first log yeah. on, you go to the top of the screen and there's mm. an option to 
to choose audio in English or Urdu yeah. at the moment, but there, we hope that there's more languages coming. Mm. And so for health professionals listening, this is something that they can refer to, is that...? They can just signpost, signpost parents, to, yeah. yeah, definitely. But yeah. as I say, health visitors have probably... They're very familiar with the Solihull approach because mm. originally it was a workforce training and then they developed the parenting programmes. So, um, yes, health visiting are very familiar with the approach. Sure. And so can I ask, is it, when, when, you, uh, div- when you were looking into this, is it specifically for parents who feel as though they're struggling with their relationship with their child or who, who's the aim, you know? Well, we would say in professional speak, it's a universal approach. So actually it's for all parents and carers, uh, anyone involved in the care of a child that wants to know more. Um, And it's just a very nice way of learning more about the importance of those early days, brain development. So even if a parent's doing the course for a child, it will take them through how the baby brain develops as well and then move on to um, later childhood development. And really, yeah, I think we all have struggles. There are different things that present challenges, different life circumstances. Um, And I just think that increasing our knowledge is is a good thing. And at least this knowledge we know we can trust because it's NHS Mm. evidence based. Um, There's a lot of things out there on the Internet and not all of them are are robust evidence-based information sure sure and so just um possibly someone coming in here just in relation to um all you need to go can you just repeat their website address for us it's www.inourplace.co.uk fantastic and the access code is hatters yes hatters oh yeah fantastic and um just a question related to parenting um it's just around um a bit of a, a, a con- not a controversial but interesting one is um youtube yeah is obviously you know you see a lot of kids nowadays and they're watching a lot of stuff on youtube etc and particularly like toddlers and young children i mean just generally given your experience and stuff is that something that you encourage as something that pe- children learn from or is too much screen time not good? I mean, what's the kind of thing? <laughs> I think, I think thoughts? my thoughts are that screen time can be really positive mm. if you are monitoring what they are accessing Um, but it's a good idea to limit it to set boundaries like you do with every other aspect of parenting Um, it's important that you know what they're accessing I often say to parents you know would you take your child to the middle of Hyde Park and walk away and say Mm. I'll be back in an hour and most of them are horrified at that thought but actually if you leave younger children totally unsupervised on the internet you actually don't know what they're accessing Mm. but there's so many resources out there to support parents to put the safety things in place Mm. to restrict what they can use great and just um coming back to the program you said there's three different so there's pregnancy is that right yes yes and then what was the middle one postnatal so after you've had the baby so those first few weeks when babies arrived which can be quite challenging for parents an exciting time but big changes great and then the third unit was understanding your child so that that goes right up to the teenage years okay yeah and so you're saying more and more uh, you get more and more queries now about over fives in terms of yes yeah i think the thing is we are spoilt in luton with flying start and it's now been here five years and so many services on offer for Mm. younger families yeah um but there is also need you know we've got um quite a fluctuating population in Luton so there are people who are arriving that are perhaps new to the country and need some extra support Mm. and often they've got over fives in the you know their parents have over fives Mm. so we're just hoping this is one way of supporting Mm. them yeah and it's it's interesting isn't it as as I mean you obviously take lessons to learn how to drive and etc etc but there's 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 no no instruction there's no no, like compulsory test before you're allowed to have children and that's the 
thing um, because actually it's mm. they're the most amazing commodity that you yeah, ever yeah, have yeah. in your life, your Absolutely. children. Indeed. And no parent wants their child yeah. to to do worse in life than they did. They yeah, all want yeah. the best for them. Absolutely. So actually making it that a universal parenting programme is available for everybody mm. Mm. and that actually you don't have to be you don't have to be struggling to yeah. have a, to yes. go on a parenting program. It's absolutely vital information to yeah. get out. And even if you are struggling, it doesn't mean you're failing. There's, mm. you know, we want to be there to be able to support. And this allows you to dip in and dip out whenever you want to. And mm. I think once you've logged on to this as well in our in our year that we've got this license at the moment, you can come back. Mm. So you've got that. Yes. Yeah. You once you've registered, yep. that doesn't expire. Right. So if you log on and register this yeah. year, that you can, as Chris yeah. says, keep going back so if you hit the teenage years and think help you can go back in yeah. um but it it will potentially only be free for this year mm, yeah. you know, depending on who how many people engage yeah and i think for me like as a father i found it quite interesting in terms of why does your child you know it's like sometimes you wonder why you know yes because like, you hear about like terrible twos or etc cetera, etc cetera, these various different kind of ideas um but it, like it gives a real insight into kind of brain development exactly and, and that all those all those behaviors there's feelings behind them mm. and all those feelings are part of a child move into the next stage that it really means when there's those temper tantrums there's a bit of extra learning that Mm. is happening so we really do encourage listeners as to take advantage of this opportunity uh just like to remind everyone as well we've got a really interesting show lined up next week uh which will be looking at uh the possibly free flu vaccine for children in uh luton schools uh, and that will be with um fahad in uh, live next Thursday 6 to 7 p.m. Please do tune in for that. Uh, the time has flown by. We literally have a few moments left. Is there anything, as I say, flying start, is there anything else you'd like to share? Um... Just go, go onto the Flying Start website yeah. because we've yeah. got so much information yeah. on there. Please do, www.flystartluton.com. You will find information on there on mm. any of the services that you would like to um, mm. access pop along to your local children's centre they're a fantastic yeah. resource in your area mm. they can signpost you to other services if need be and if mm. you're struggling absolutely. yeah please take advantage of what's mm. on offer there yeah. is a lot yeah absolutely and often it's that it's the first step to approaching your children's absolutely once you're, once you're in it's kind of yeah, yeah. you feel so supporting mm. you about so just going to share mm. most parents who actually come to our face-to-face parenting groups at the end say oh it wasn't long enough so it's just about taking as well that first First step step. sometimes Mm, absolutely great guys i'd just like to thank you uh for giving up your evening to be with us beautiful weather out there and you're here in the air conditioned studio (laughs) that's Uh, fine (laughs) but as i say i really do appreciate it I, i can vouch for the program it really was interesting in terms of you know and it's available for free a lot of other people in a lot of other places are paying for it so please do um take advantage of that uh listeners do stay with us we'll be discussing mental health and suicide prevention after these short messages allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you to long for him Allah created you to desire Him. Allah created you for one moment and one moment only. And that moment is the day where you will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was in this beautiful city of Medina and I was sitting with one of my teachers. I was reading a text to him. And the habit of Saudi Arabia in general, not just Medina, is that wherever you're going, even if it's a short distance, you're going to be zooming down. Like it's a 30 kilometer zone, you're driving like 130. So we're going like 130 kilometers an hour. No one's wearing their seatbelts. Very unsafe, very dangerous. And as we're driving away from the university, the teacher halts his car and goes to a sudden break. And I go jerking forward. And I'm like, whoa, what just happened? You know, no one crossed by. No one, you know, there's no reason to stop. Why did he stop? And the sheikh, he stops the car. He gets out of the car. He walks and he does something. And then he comes back into the car. So I couldn't, you know, resist it. I had to ask him, Ya Sheikh, what was that all about? What did you just do? And he says, you know, Naveed, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us that the lowest form of Iman is to remove something harmful from the pathway. 
and I saw a glass bottle and I thought to myself, SubhanAllah, what if someone gets injured while stepping on it? Or what if due to the heat of the sun, it explodes and like pops a tire or something of that nature? He says, you know, Naveed, the greatest moment in our lives, what we hope for is that meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you never know what that deed is that will allow you one extra second, one extra minute, one extra hour to look at the beautiful face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for you to express yourself at that time that, oh Allah, I struggled in this world for your sake. Oh Allah, I held on to this deen well like hot coals for your sake. Oh Allah, I sacrificed, I lived and I died for your sake. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being a shukur, the one who appreciates, he will say, oh my slave, for you is this paradise and everything else that your heart covets and desires. My dear brothers and sisters, that is Allah. Long to meet Him and He will long to meet you. Did you know that Amr radiallahu anhu built the first masjid at the request of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It was the masjid in Quba. You're listening to an Inspire FM podcast, making available our popular programs from our daily broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the health and fitness show. I'm your host for today, Suleiman Rafiq, and we are broadcasting live from the studios of Inspire FM today, the 19th of September 2019, reaching listeners in Luton and surrounding areas. If you prefer to watch as well as listen, you can do that via Facebook. All you have to do is go to our Facebook page and click on our live link. Now, remember, this is your show, so why not get involved? You can do that that by text or whatsapp on 0777 948 I really appreciate all of you have got in touch already and welcome any more messages so that number again is 0777 948 Now, before I introduce the second half of today's show and uh, our guests, I'd like to say that uh, the British Islamic Medical Association have organized their annual Lifesavers project and it's coming to Luton this year. So Lifesavers is the flagship project of BEMA, uniting healthcare professionals in service of their local community. It will be a single day and be focusing on teaching uh, four life-saving skills. Uh, one, CPR. Two, recovery position. Three, management of choking. And finally, four, management of bleeding. Each of these skills are taught using an explanation at the beginning, a practical demonstration and a chance for attendees to practice at the end. This follows the accredited British Heart Foundation Heart Start program. The project was initially started off in 2014 with uh, three mosques and now has expanded to 125 and I'm delighted to say that Burry Park Jamia Mosque is taking part on Saturday the 28th of September at 2pm. For any more information, please visit www.britishima.org forward slash lifesavers. So, uh, the, on the 10th of September, it was World Suicide Prevention Day. Um, and this is a very important topic, given the number of lives that are lost to suicide each year. And I'm delighted to be joined by four expert guests in the studio. We've got a full studio. It's the first time I've ever had a full studio, as far as I can remember. Um, and so I'm going to ask them to just go around and introduce themselves. Starting with Jalal. Yeah, my name is Jalal, founder of um, Our Minds Matter. I'm Elizabeth Bailey from Luton uh, Borough Council Public Health Team and I work on suicide prevention across Bedford, Luton and Milton Keynes. I'm Laura Tofts and I work for the Recovery College in Luton. Uh, and I'm Larry Redmond and I volunteer with Luton Samaritans. Fantastic, great. Guys, given it's such beautiful weather, I appreciate the fact that you've given up your evening to be with us. Um, so I'm just going to start with a simple question, Jalau, if I may. What is mental health? Um, it means different things to different people, but I like to define it as um, something that we all have. Um, and I think it's just the way of how we manage our, like, if you think about physical body, 
it's the same as how we manage our mental health, which is something to do a lot with the mind. Mm. And is there anything else anyone would like to share in terms of when we discuss mental health, being clear on what we mean? Uh, the only thing I'd like to say is mental health can be both uh, good and bad, and mm. you shouldn't assume that if you had bad mental health that you can't get better or improve it. Mm. No, we'll say that recovery is not just uh, possible, it's probable. Sure. And another thing that we see more and more of is the concept of mental health first aid. Mm. What, what do we mean when we say that, Elizabeth? Well, uh, Jalel and I are both mental health first aid tutors in Luton. And uh, what, what the scheme basically is, is um, teaching uh, better understanding and awareness of, of mental health, both good or ill, how to look after yourself, um, common conditions that people can experience, and, and also, very importantly, uh, how to recognise and tackle stigma, because uh, when we're talking about suicide, stigma is a key factor in people not engaging with mental health services. Um, and there's an awful lot of stigma around mental ill health generally, and suicide in particular. So the Mental Health First Aid is um, a peer-led education programme to teach people to... Uh, recognize the signs of mental ill health in the workplace and do something about it sure and it seems to be just growing and expanding and it's a, it's be it's a it's a priority for the government mm. uh, and th that's for a number of reasons there's a lot of on a very practical level there's a lot of absenteeism and lack of uh, um, loss of productivity caused by mental ill health aside from the human suffering mm, absolutely. yeah what we say is you know to when, when we're talking from the charity perspective people got you know, car insurance, but they don't have mental health first aid. And we think there's something that needs to change in that sense. If you think about everybody's got everyday things like, you know, a toothbrush, mm. but you don't have mental health first aid, there's something that needs to be addressed. Sure. So, Laura, you said about the recovery college. Can you just explain what exactly that is? So, it's, um, it's based in Luton and all over Bedfordshire as well. Oh. It's a virtual college at the moment where we don't have a permanent base, but that is something that's coming out in the future, say in about a month. But that just, just watch this space. It's um, basically we run, um, we have tutors that come in and run free, which is a key word, free workshops and courses for anybody and everybody all over Luton and Bedfordshire. So, even if you live in Luton, you can access the ones in Bedford and vice versa. Anybody can attend, including professionals. You've just got to be over the age of 18, and it's really easy to enrol. So, t linking in with the uh, suicide prevention, we do actually have one. Um, we have a couple. So, we've got the um, suicide prevention workshop, which is Thursday, the 5th of December, and that's at 9 30 till 1 pm at University of Bedfordshire. And then we also have these, there's a Samaritan's Talk, uh, which is on Wednesday the 16th of October, 1pm till 2pm at Hope Church. So j that's just two of them, but we have over sort of seven, there's about 40, no, 40 in Luton and... In, including Bedfordshire is about 100 different courses in total yeah. and workshops they range from anxiety management stress management su suicide awareness um hoarding OCD there's lots there mm. for anybody to access so and do you need to be referred by a health professional how does it no work? no anybody can you can self -ref well we don't say refer it's more of an enrollment it's a choice mm. they're all just to better your own um your well-being and your knowledge some people go along for training you can easily go along onto the website onto elf um website to look look at the recovery college there um or you can go to elf at elf.recoverycollege at nhs.net um, to email us and we can send you a form and that's it. Great, thank you. And so, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, it was World Suicide Prevention Day on the 10th of September and so I'll just invite all of you really to share what's been happening locally. Maybe Elizabeth, you want to kick us off? Well, uh, you should talk to Laura because <laughs> she's doing some fan fantastic stuff. But uh, basically, we've been promoting uh, initiatives we have across the three counties. So the um, see the. Uh, what is it? See the Sign Save a Life campaign that started off in Bedford and Milton Keynes and is, we hope to establish more in Luton. Um, we're sharing, we've been sharing uh, messages from the major charities and communicating uh, 
uh, information and, and places to where you can get help. But when we haven't just confined our activities of the day. Obviously, we're here tonight, which is a week later. Um, and uh, we locally have a committee that Laura and I are involved in that, that um, plans a lot of activities all year round around mental well-being and, and suicide prevention. And Laura's got some fabulous stuff <laughs> up her sleeve, so maybe you should ask her. Go for it. Well, we have actually got quite a few, and it's been a busy, um, I say, a last couple of months creating this project. But um, it's, it's called The Recovery Walk, and it's happening on Tuesday the 8th of October in Mental Health Awareness Week. Um, so it's starting at Stockwood Park at 10 a.m. We have uh, the Luton Town, a couple of people down from there playing a, a mini tournament, mini oh. tournament at 9 a.m. So people get down there, anyone anyone can join. Mm. The walk does start at 10, like I said, and we've mapped out lots of services around Luton, including Noah, Penrose, Resolutions, Mind, um, Samaritans, Food Bank, um, Hope. Hope Church and we've gone around quite a few of the services and what we've done is at each point when we when we stop off at each point the service is able to give a little bit of information to the public about what they do share with the public maybe some refreshments bits and pieces like that and then we're ending the walk at um, St George's Square and that will all finalise for around about 2.30 p.m. but like I said anybody is able to to, able to come along mm. um, even on your lunch break come and pop down but it's going to be there's lots of things to do and we've actually included the history a bit of history and culture of Luton in, okay. in the walk too so there's some activities along the way that people can get involved in great and so what was the date again Tuesday the 8th of October, October. Um, just as well on top of that there's another <laughs> couple of things sorry on Monday the 7th of October and Thursday the 10th of October um, myself and Tony Isles the manager of Recovery College will be down the mall um, outside Poundland and we've got a few services coming along there to join us as well to support so we've busy week yeah, yeah. Absolutely. you're coming on the walk aren't you Sullivan Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> you are now. <laughs> I'll definitely see you outside Poundland. Yeah. Like it's always in Poundland. I'm always in Poundland. I love going to Poundland. And there are other discount shops available. <laughs> yeah. uh, so um, it's, 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 it's great that we've now kind of reached a stage where there's, there's, there seems to be a lot of conversation in this, mm. in this zone and this area. I know previously, Larry, when you were on at the beginning of the year, we spoke about why... Um, suicide rates were higher in men is that still something that we're seeing yeah the figures which came out for uh, 2017 still show that there's a three to one ratio men to to women who take their life by suicide um, that doesn't seem to be changing um, the group uh, within the men which are, are mainly the the kind of 20 to 50 year olds are still the highest group I suspect whilst every suicide is unique and the reason for them are there, it tends to be um, the people who have uh, less social movement, less, more poverty um, and less opportunity to, to share uh, with others. That seems to be the group which it hits most, which when you look around Luton and you see the depravity, um, across our society, it does does concern you that we need the men out there to actually talk um, and others in their society to actually listen to them. Um, Samaritans obviously listen, but it's the responsibility of all of us to actually listen and that the campaign of See the Science Save a Life is about recognising that with those around you mm. and that it can hit anybody. Um, and you don't know when it's going to happen. Sure. And so campaigns called See the Signs, what are, what are the signs? Well, the signs are, it, it's really things like um, people changing their mood, um, talking about feeling hopeless, um, talking about feeling trapped, uh, and just anything which changes from how they normally are. So if you see that change in someone that you really know well, you have to question, why have they changed? And perhaps the, the, the very simple question about how are you feeling today is so powerful when someone actually answers it. Mm -hmm. And 
but people will obviously always look for someone who they can trust and who when they share those feelings they're not going to react in a, a, a negative manner to it mm -hmm. yeah um yeah no these are these are very important uh it's a very important campaign i was just going to add i think we should you know we're talking about suicide prevention we should always look about what we can do so obviously it's about responsibility so you know how we stop making judgments how we stop having expectations you know so in the workplace for example you might say you know it's a fantastic achievement and then after the the campaign's finished then we start treating people as we did before so mm. i think we have to sort of have some self you know introspection that's the key and you have to look at the key drivers to the suicide if you really want to prevent it. Mm. It's all right, good having balloons and stuff, you know, mm. celebrating this day. Mm. But you need to get at the housing, you know, addiction, mm. some issues, all these little things which are causing the drivers sure. of suicide. Mm. I mean, you just hinted at a key factor, which is in a lot of suicides is, is substance uh, misuse and alcohol in particular is linked to suicide in many cases. Mm -hmm. And I know that... Um, at the beginning of the year, one of the reasons we, we were discussing the topic was because of um, some personal experiences that we'd had. And you mentioned there in terms of um, the focus on prevention. So can we just broaden it out in terms of what are, what are some of the things people, everyone can do to, um, you know, support their own mental health? Some national campaigning has hinged around starting conversations in public places, for example, mm. where we know suicides happen. Uh, and in Luton, that's Lee Grace Station, there have been a number of incidents, and also in a number of our tall buildings. So you might be in a situation where you see somebody who's behaving in a manner that concerns you slightly. Um, and, you know, there's an opportunity to strike up a conversation and ask somebody if they're all right and if they want to talk at all. Mm -hmm. um, we ran a campaign last year, which is prior to the Real People, Real Stories, which was Small Talk Saves Lives. Yes. And that is about, if you see someone just saying hello, how, in amount, how they are, can start a conversation and can break their thought pattern which may at that moment be suicidal thoughts. You won't know if you've done it or not, but it's that engaging with people mm -hmm. because we live in a community. We don't live, we are social animals and we don't live in isolation. And it, we believe at Samaritans that human contact is one of the key things that our service gives, but what should be promoted all the time. Mm. And just in terms of, uh, you know, a lot of people have probably heard of the name Samaritans, but just for clarity, what exactly does the Samaritans do? So the Samaritans are a listening service. Uh, we have a free phone number, 116123. Um, we have an email service at joe at samaritans.org. And what we basically do is we give a place where people who are in any sort of distress, they don't have to be suicide, can contact us and they will have what we call a listening volunteer at the other end who will listen to them, talk to them and give them a space where they're not judged, where there's no determination of setting parameters on it, where their choices are the most important thing and really just giving people space to be able to talk truly about their feelings and how that's affecting their day-to-day -day life. Hmm. And from memory, one of the things was that the number doesn't appear on your bills and stuff. Is yeah, that, yeah. yeah the, it, confidentiality, confidentiality is, is, mm. is incredibly important. And also the fact that you don't have to um, give a Samaritan when you're talking to them their name, your location. There's nothing comes up on your bill. No one will know you've called. Um, and that idea that you can talk to someone about your your deepest feelings and most worrying concerns without having to give your name or even sometimes your gender you can you can have a, a really powerful discussion with people and they can work to what their solution mm -hmm. uh, for them at that point in time sure 
And Jalel, our Minds Matters have been running for a number of years in Luton in, in, in this space. I mean, what's the kind of latest uh, around that? Uh, well, first of all, you know, what Larry was saying was um, there's no one in the, the marketplace that's better than them. Samaritans are essential. If we if you didn't have Samaritans, you would have a bigger epidemic on your hands. Mm. Um, I mean, what we do as a charity, essentially, we signpost to places like Samaritans, Recovery College, and other public health organisations. But for us, the reality is most of the most of the guys that come to the charity, they they're not going to reach they they they're not going to reach out to um, services out there because lots of different reasons. So they come and talk to us about you know what what's happened or what's happening, particularly to their member of family around suicide. So we try and encourage them to say, look, okay, look, we can't solve this problem for you. It's not my job, really, at the end of the day, or not the charity's job. It's actually the responsibility to fold in all of you. So what we can do is just provide you with the tools and the right education and signposts so you make that decision, at least it's an informed decision. Sure. Uh, listeners, I'd like to remind you that you can get involved. You can do this by text or WhatsApp on 0777-948-1822. That number again, 0777-948-1822. Um, we've had a question in and it's just around, is it is it a particular issue in Luton? I don't know if um, Elizabeth... We don't have unusually high suicide rates, no. Uh, we have a, a, a sort of... A, it's, it's around the national average. Mm. Um, but we do have... Um, we are worried about locations and the distressing, particularly distressing way people are uh, taking their lives in our town. Mm. Um, and we ha we're working with people like British Transport Police at Lee Grave and obviously the owners uh, of, of the tall buildings. So... Um, it, the, the, the pro one of the problems is that um, or n numbers for our town alone are, are relatively small, so there will be under 10 deaths per year, generally. Um, uh, and it's really hard to talk about the types of people without identifying them, so we can't really go into depth about that. Yeah. Um, but generally, uh, we're concerned ab about reaching across our very, very diverse community properly, you know, reaching into all of those parts, because really it does affect absolutely everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, however, in some pockets of our communities, there are more, perhaps more stigma and more taboo around it. Mm. And my understanding from reading around it a little bit was that um, often it's not recorded in a certain way for etc. and... <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I, mean, I was going to say like statistics are, can be very misleading mm. in that sense. You know, as you would know in public health, um, Solomon, mm. <laughs> that uh, you know statistics don't tell us the full full story. Um, I don't know if Martin, but Larry, I, 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 I think I think the thing you have to be careful about is when you talk about the number of people who have died by suicide. That's the the final point. Mm -hmm. it, we don't have records of the number of people who have attempted suicide mm. we don't have records of the number of people who have suicidal thoughts which is believed to be around one in five um, of all people at some point in their life will have suicidal thoughts the impact is very much like that iceberg we can see this tiny little bit at the top but the distress which causes someone to reach that point is incredible mm. so if you just look at it of preventing suicide mm. you're almost <coughs> understating what this is really about it's about removing distress from people's life and allowing them to have a better health generally and a better life and the impact of of a death by suicide or an attempted suicide is just enormous mm -hmm. all of the people who know them there'll be guilt there's all of the people in their area and everything's about it. So mm. this is very much a sharp point at the end. And That's Sorry. Yeah, no, just, uh, I'd like to just this, um, I'd like to make point of this question that's coming. Thank you for, for, thank you for your questions, listeners. It's just in relation to what support is available for families of someone who might have um, died by suicide. Well, cer certain, certainly you'll have something like um, crews, 
but you'll also have uh, Samaritans. And what I would say is Samaritans are there for anyone. It, if It could be that someone you know has had suicidal thoughts and you want to talk that through, then, then reach right. out. Um, there is lots of support for the families and everything. Yeah. Great. Um, and we have particular ones related mm. to young people. Sure. We are fast approaching the end of our show. Elizabeth? I was just going to say, I, I, I actually have a list of organisations in front of me. Mm. It's too long to read out, but I can send it to you to yeah. share with listeners Great, on the yeah. me- we'll, website. We'll put it on the Facebook, on the, on the Facebook absolutely. We literally, I mean, time has flown. Um, I'd like to remind listeners we've got another live show next week, and that will be uh, around the flu vaccinations for Luton school children the uh, flu fighters campaign and the work that's being done around six public and free private schools with the uh, specific project we literally have a minute left does anyone have any final comments for listeners any final thoughts yeah, I was just going to say, make it an everyday conversation just like with Brexit, you should be talking about suicide more than Brexit Yes, mm. yeah. and I, I totally agree with Jalel, my family's been touched by suicide and I was saying to Larry before, what surprised me was the taboo and the silence around it mm. Great. Guys? Um, yeah, and if you do want to have a quick just uh, um, catch up and want to find out a bit more information, definitely come along to the Suicide Prevention Workshop at Thursday, Thursday the 5th of December, 9.30. Great. And, uh, I, would, I would say that the most important thing is to be there for others and to listen to them, mm. truly listen, rather than have your agenda. Great, that's great. Thank you very much for your time. Listeners, thank you for joining us. As I say, we'll be back again live next week. Salam alaikum. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Why not tune in to our live stream at inspirefm.org and follow and subscribe to our social media platforms at InspireFM Luton.